Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of the most requested CSS topics I've gotten, and that is the CSS display property. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about the display property in no time at all. So let's get started now. To get started, I have a really simple example of the different display properties at work. And as you can see inside of my HTML, I just have a div, which is red. I have a span, which is the cyan color, an image right here in the middle. And then I have another span of this purple color. And then finally this last div at the very bottom. And as you can see already, I have three different display properties at work. The very first display property is these divs. You can see they take up the entire width of the screen and nothing else is on the same line as them. This is because these divs are display block by default. So for example, it would look like this display of block. That is their default display property. And what display block does is it means that this is going to take up the entire width given to it. Essentially, it's going to force a new line above it and a new line below it. So all of the content on this element is going to have nothing next to it. All the content needs either above it or below it because it takes up the full width. As you can see here, this div doesn't sit right next to the span here because it has to have a new line at the beginning. So essentially it's on the next line and it takes up the full width. Same thing with this div. The span is not next to that div and that's because this div is display block. Now spans on the other hand, they are a default of display inline. And essentially what inline elements is do is they take up the minimum amount of space possible. As you can see, this blue color, the cyan color only takes up the minimum amount of space to fit all of the content inside of this span. So that's what an inline element does. Also, as you can see, all these inline elements, they're all on the same line. They share the space together because they take up the least amount of space possible. There's no line breaks or anything on these elements. They all try to fit as closely as possible to each other. And that's what inline elements do. Now this image is a little bit different because this is a combination of the two. This is an inline block element. And the way an inline block element works is it is exactly the same as an inline element. It's going to try to take up the least amount of space possible. Other things can be on the same line of it, but with an inline block element, you can set the width and height of the element. As you can see here, this image is 50 by 50 pixels. If I try to change this span, which we know is inline, and I try to say, I want a height of 400 pixels and a width here of 500 pixels. And I save, you see the span isn't changing. Nothing's actually happening. And that's because inline elements can't have a width or height. Even my editor is yelling at me, as you can see, these are underlined saying that they don't actually work. So if you wanted to have width and height on an inline element, you need to make sure you use inline block. Now, the last main type of display that you need to know is going to be display none. And this is really straightforward. We're going to make this final div here display of none. And as you can see, it just completely disappears. Display none acts as if the element was just completely deleted from your HTML. It's as if it doesn't exist everything else will move around it. If we change this back here to its normal display, and instead we make this first span a display of none, you can see that everything just moves over as if that span never existed. It doesn't take up any space. It's not just invisible. It literally does not exist. Now there are two other display properties that are really common that you're going to want to know, and that is going to be display flex and also display of grid. And these elements are incredibly complex and they have a lot of intricacies to both of them, which is why I have full videos on both display flex and display grid explaining all of the in-depth details of those display properties. So if you want to learn more about those, make sure you check them out linked in the cards and the description below. And that's it. The display property is really that simple. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.